Hi, I'm Dr. Cindy Dupuy. I have a PhD in learning disabilities. I do assessment and intervention. I'm also an adult with dyslexia and dysgraphia. Hi, my name is Kim Sharman. I uh, work with kids who have dyslexia, dysgraphia, ADHD. I'm a reading, writing, remediation specialist, and I work with kids kindergarten through college. Okay, and so today we're finishing up all the index scores on the WISC for the basic ones. And so our last one is processing speed. So Kim, when you hear the title processing speed, what does that mean to you? Well, I get confused sometimes between processing speed and word retrieval, but processing speed is how quickly you can use all the faculties of your brain to retrieve information and synthesize data. No, not right. Okay, never mind. Uh, it is a speed component. It is much more a, it's not so much about retrieving as it is processing stimuli. So the analogy, like an analogy I can think of, which is not necessarily particularly applicable to today's world, was we used to have people that would file right? Like you'd have a yes. giant stack of files and somebody would have to put them all away. Uh -huh. The person that could do that really fast, that's a processing speed task. Um, a person that can quickly enter data and, you know, just plugs data in quickly. Um, a person that can do kind of a repetitive task, but there's a component to it that's not just pure speed. So there's a thinking component to it, but it isn't necessarily um, the pattern recognition and the visual spatial processing and all of those kinds of things. It's much more data churning, if you can think of it that way. Does that kind of make right. sense? Yeah, I did not realize that. Um, if you're filing, you have to be able to do something in alphabetical order and right? Right, right. So and there's still so, some element uh, that you're holding in working memory or... Well, it's like, where is this in the alphabet? How quickly can I plug it in, right? Okay, that's that's more helpful. Yeah, got it. Yeah, um, somebody that can code. So somebody that maybe codes medical, where they're like plugging in numbers really quickly and filling out forms super quickly. And there's there's a level of analysis in there, but they're not necessarily um, looking at mounds and mounds of data and saying, what's the pattern here? They're not saying, um, how do I explain this to somebody else? It's like churn and burn a little bit. Does that kind and, of make sense? Yeah. And, and you know, we, we both have had lots of very, very bright kids with slow processing speeds. And supposedly Einstein had slow processing speed. Is that not true? Uh, since Einstein was never tested, I, I hate it when people oh, reach conclusions yeah. when we have no valid data for it and it's all abstraction and we don't know that to be but sure you can be super super bright and have slow processing speed uh yes and it's it can vary so um i don't have fast processing speed so if you give me the coding subtest i am not super fast on the other hand i can do a lot of things simultaneously very quickly and kind of churn and burn so it it kind of depends on the nature of the task. Like I can um, process language very quickly and nuances of what somebody's saying to me and get the joke and also, but yeah. is that also processing speed? That's more language processing versus, I guess we would subdivide that into uh, processing with higher level demands versus lower level demands. Like, in Bloom's taxonomy, one of these days we're going to do a video on Bloom's taxonomy. But so, so yeah, I there's a subtlety and nuance here that I'm not sure I can completely describe, but it's much more a flow process than an analysis process. Does that make okay. sense? Yeah, I think so. Okay, so there's two processing speed subtests. One that we typically see with our kids with dysgraphia being low is I can't remember. frozen. Oh, very, very BMI? No, no, no. The coding oh. subtest. Oh, decoding subtest. Okay, sorry. Coding. Coding. I'm having processing <laughs> Cracking me up. I hope people see the humor in the two of us. So yeah. on the coding subtest, you've got a number bar above and under oh, yeah. underneath it, you've got these symbols. And yeah. down below, you have a randomized sequence of those numbers, and you have to translate the numbers into the symbol. And you get the churn and burn concept, and then you start ripping. Yes. Right. Like, some people don't. Yeah. Right. 
I don't have that exact fast memorization. Like I can label and name some of them, mm -hmm. but I can't, I'm not super fast in getting it down. Okay. Right. So there are kids out there that can do this fast memorization. Like they look at it, they've got the combination um, and they can scan super fast and they can just rip through it. I don't have a lot of them that come through that way, but when I do, I'm like, oh my gosh, it's mm -hmm. amazing to watch. Okay. Mm -hmm. So kids with super high processing speeds are the ones that um, can get homework done quickly if it doesn't require, like if you gave them a sheet of 40 division problems, they just whip through them, you know, just basic division. Um, if it was, what else? Um, there are some people with super fast processing speed that can edit super fast. Like they can see all the changes and go boo, 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 and just plug it all in. Right. Okay. Now our kids with low processing speed have low processing speed for a variety of reasons. One is they can just be slow processors. They feel like the world is moving at a really fast pace. Uh -huh. and they just can't keep up with it. And so the, I have an analogy on that because I know I have analogies on a lot of these things. So the analogy on that is I have kids that are super bright in other areas. And then we get to the processing speed and it's like slow. And I do a comparison and I say, you know, uh, a lot of kids don't know what the Indianapolis 500 is, but the race cars, right? And I tell them that they're driving a huge giant earth moving machine on the Indianapolis 500. And there's only so fast that machine can go. But if they, you know, turn the wheel, they would crush the car next to them. I see. So there can be lots of power there, but just not a lot of speed. Does that make sense? Yeah. And is it doom and gloom if you have slow processing speed or not? Okay. No. There are things that you can do to compensate and there are things that you can do to build skills. Okay. So compensate is, let's not give you 40 problems, let's give you 15. Like That's right. survey to make sure that you know it. Let's if also decide, is this something where speed is really important, mm -hmm. right? Is it important that you do 900 of these very, very quickly? Uh, if, you're, if you're trading on the stock market, yeah, speed makes a difference, right? Yes. That extra half seconds is the difference between so much money and so if you have a slow processing speed unless you have some compensatory mechanisms that may not be the place to go and you'll find out that um the reason why a lot of times kids with slow processing speeds or dysgraphia or dyslexia they don't want to do that mad minute those timed things you have to think about what is the purpose if your purpose is to have your child learn her math facts or his math facts then you cut that mad minute into 10 or 15 problems, not 60 or whatever it is, not 30. Emphasize accuracy over speed. Right, emphasize accuracy and learning the concept because some of those people are not going to be able to ever do that. And you're just destroying their ability and willingness self -esteem, to- self-esteem, yeah. Self-esteem, sorry, yeah. Now, just like anything, there's a misconception that a low score on the processing speed measures on a whisk mean that you have low processing speed. But as we've talked about in many different situations, the coding subtest does not just measure processing speed. It measures visual motor integration. It measures visual memory. It measures attention. And so if we have a kid that's distracted, you know, yeah. something happens and you lose flow and then you've got to get back into it. If you have a hard time making the symbols consistently and neatly, that's going to slow you down. If you're constantly having to re refer up and you can't memorize any of the combinations, that's going to slow you down. So there's lots of things that can affect your slow processing speed. And the way we differentiate that is we give you other speed-based tasks that don't involve those components to say, can you do them? So for example... Uh, I love the the fluency measures on the Woodcock Johnson. So there's uh, a sentence reading fluency and I'll have kids that tank coding and we give them the sentence reading fluency and they kill it because all they're doing is circling yes or no. Yeah. So it's a different kind of speed task. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah. 
And I'm okay. not going to bring up rapid automatic naming because that's going to confuse everything, right? Yeah. That's and we've got a video on that. So let's talk about symbol search, hmm. which you probably haven't seen a lot of, right? Um, I have it on a game on my iPad. Okay. So yeah. we have some target symbols on the left and an array of symbols on the right. And you have to... So... I wish you could turn that off and zoom. Uh, so uh, on the younger kids version, they have one symbol and the array. On the older kids version, they have two symbols and the array. And if you see the symbol in the array, you draw a line through it. If you don't see the symbol, you draw a line through the no box. And again, it's two minutes. How many can you do? And um, we we want to measure both your speed and accuracy in that. Okay, so do I dare ask you what processing things could get in the way? We know the big one. Well, if you have trouble associating, um, holding on to visual pictures of symbols and associating the meaning with that symbol. Well, there's no meaning to it because they're just random geometric shapes. Oh. So attention always comes in. Okay, attention also, um, Visual perception. Visual perception. Okay, so being able to look at a symbol over here and then be able to find that symbol in another area. Yeah, and what they intentionally do is they'll have an arrow pointing one way and an arrow pointing the other way in the array or slight variations of that target and did you see it or not? And so that visual perception can play a role in that. Is right? this left-right business? I mean, I always associate left-right with dysgraphia, but is this visual visual perception left right north south east no 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 That's not it. at all and again it's and then we go to the other component so we take the motor component out on this one so often you can see a kid with a low coding score and a high symbol search code mm -hmm. or score not code uh and that high symbol search code takes the graphomotor part out so it's no longer, can I get the symbols down and can I memorize the pairing, right? And if I were going to say one is a more pure measure of processing speed, I'd say symbol search is yeah. more pure measure of processing speed than coding. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, we can see that contrast. And if you see that super load coding score and your kid's handwriting looks awful, as we've mentioned in other videos, Maybe time to go look at the visual motor integration and see if there's other things going on there. Yep. Does that all make sense? So now let's do what will we do to work on this? Visual perception. So their visual perception tasks. I mean, processing speed. Well, if we go to symbol search, there are visual perception tasks where you have a target and can you find the target? Right. right. So sometimes. You have to talk your way. Some people talk their way through it. Yeah. So I would say arrow this, like I, I could say aloud arrow this way. And then I would search like, so in addition, just to using my eyes, now I'm using my voice to tell myself and to remind myself what I'm looking for. Right. What um, else would you use? So there are lots of speed-based activities on the iPad where it's, can you scan through and work quickly? Right. Um, we can speed up handwriting. We can speed up the graphomotor piece through practice. Now, the thing I always want to caution people on uh, is working on a skill just to work on a skill doesn't necessarily result in better academic performance. Mm -hmm. So I can have you draw perfect circles over and over and over again, but that's not suddenly going to make you do math problems faster. Mm. The brain can learn anything in a repetitive form, right? But it doesn't necessarily apply to all other areas. Right. Which is why, so um, a lot of people encourage vision therapy. Mm. And there's a small portion of the population that truly benefits from it. But they're not looking at the statistics in the correct way. So they're building an isolated skill set and not seeing it come back to the academics. And my root argument is always build the academics. If you're going in and teaching the decoding, if you're going in and you're working on the handwriting and the motor coordination piece directly in terms of handwriting, 
and then we're not getting there, then we go back farther in the system. But to start early in the system and build these tiny little discrete skills yeah. Yeah. without incorporating them into academics hasn't consistently shown to prove good academic progress. And I may offend some people out there that truly believe in vision therapy, but the research literature doesn't show vision therapy yields great outcomes in terms of reading improvement. Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, if I need to teach a kid how to not take five minutes to write a sentence, I, I've got to improve the skill of handwriting and the automaticity and the formation of writing these letters, or I've got to improve their typing skills. Or I've got to improve their ability to formulate a sentence. True. Or I've got to improve their spelling, or right. I've got to improve other components to yield the outcome in writing versus, hey, can your eye pick up this tiny little detail? Right. I want to go straight to working on academics. And that's and, the theoretical yeah. perspective that I came up with in my graduate program. I don't want to say I came up with like I created that. It's the way I was trained was let's build academic skills in their core. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it, and, and some and some of these things are so complex, you have to parse them apart. You have to take pieces of the writing process apart and fix these individual little pieces first so it can all come together. Yes, but there's skills that are directly involved with that. Right. I'm not discreetly working on just making vertical lines. No, no, no. Yeah. I'm working on handwriting as a coordinated process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Unless I'm really, really young, mm -hmm. like I'm a three or four year old. Yes. All right. With that, we will do more later. Thanks. <laughs>